Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. The video you're about to see was filmed a while ago and I'm going to do a review of how these shocks have been going. As always, first things first, this is the coolest shirt I think I have ever owned. It has a 75. I'm going with a 75 because it looks like the roof is separate, hence 75 series. How cool. Okay, that's from Second Rodeo Clothing. I'll put the link so you can go check them out. I just finished work and I'm still got dirt everywhere. In this video, you're gonna see me put in the brand new Dobinson Remote Res Shocks. They are 11 inch travel. 10 inch is probably a bit more suited, but I'm gonna just try the 11s and see how they go. And I just thought I'd, you know, wait a little bit to film this just to give a review on how they've been going and if it's worth it and if I like them and yeah we'll get into the fitment video first yeah hey guys and welcome back to my channel slash underneath my car again should start all videos under here we are under here today to change out these shocks look I don't think they're restricting much travel because obviously I have the load bearing leaf pack in the rear so it doesn't have as much travel as the front you just want more so I don't know we'll see how we go Oh, it's a mud! Oh, that's gonna come say a lot. This is where my spare tire used to be. Not anymore. If I, if I like them, I'll probably end up putting them in the front. Remote res is just gonna be good for going to the Cape because from what I hear, the corrugations and the constant work that your shocks are gonna be doing, you really don't want them overheating and leaking everywhere. So remote res is gonna be a little bit better for, for that. Again guys, I'm trying not to use any workshop tools, so compressed air or anything like that. Just this Stanley tool kit that I've got and we'll just see how strong I'm feeling today. Because these haven't been off since they went on. Let's have a good start. for cracking bolts and you only have a ratchet or a spanner do it in a way that when it lets go you're not going to run into anything your fingers your head try not to pull things towards you because even if you slip or like when things crack they normally crack in a fairly decent way so that's my only advice not always able to be achieved Dick or dirt Nicky Doggo. The dirt Nicky Doggo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no, it's dead there. Dead there. Dead there. Good boy. I really should have cleaned under here before I started because it's quite dirty. Oh, that's going to be fun. Get off. One. Try and get one side, the top on. Might have to lower. Raise the cruiser up, sorry. Just to get the bottom one on. Okay, and before I do this, I'm not going to put jack stands under the car. I'm not going to put jack stands under the car. Obviously, I'm sitting under the car right now. Seriously. I have like a party up here. So don't freak out. It'll be fine, people. Small area. 
Okay, you can just wait up there, bro. So you want to clean up the studs that the shop mounts to. And get your bushes. Oh my god! What a what an effort. <laughs> This is the worst idea because where I am is the sun's like directly coming in to where I am, so it's super hot. But shocks are in. It involved some stuff. It's not even gonna go there again. And it also involved another jack, some ratchet straps. Because I could not compress them enough to get them in. I was so pooped. It was so much effort. I'll show you from this way and before anybody freaks out about this bad boy again, obviously the wheels are still on and I can still sit under my car with without it jacked up. So don't everyone freak out at once. Stocks are in. Obviously that is fairly high on this side because the diff is offset. Normally when this spring is completely flat, so it's not all the way flat flat yet, it'll just be under that retainer bob. I've got that much left. We'll see how it goes. Look at this sleepy puppies. Oh, hello sleepy papa. Oh, look at this papa. Look at this papa. I don't know guys, what are we thinking? I just don't want it to sort of be in the way. Oh, so now that's near my exhaust. Maybe? Alrighty guys, I think we're done. Um, I'm gonna have to get new bolts because these are permanently stuck on those washers um, and they do come with with new ones that there's the bottom and I've just looped the remote res up onto the side so yeah oh Shocks are on. This is why I can't, not only does my car not fit in the shed, because I can't drive all the way forward, but we have this. And there's crap all over my face. I like them. I think they're gonna be good. I know you guys wanted to see some forward driving, but this is probably the best that I can do at the moment. So that was me fitting my shocks in the boiling heat and I was over it and <laughs> I was on hard ground and I just wanted to get it done. So sorry that I cut a bit out there. There's some white people. You, 
you really didn't miss much. It was just me trying to put the bottom mount in. The footage from the cheeky wheel video, I also had the shocks in then as well. So being a leaf sprung car, you're not gonna notice a great deal of difference when you're changing shocks, especially in the rear. So the only time I noticed it really comfort wise on road was when I go over speed bumps, so front wheels go over, back wheels go over. It's less harsh. I wouldn't say at any point, or no matter what you do, uh, a leaf spring car is never gonna be comfortable and cloud-like. <laughs> it's just less harsh. <laughs> Off-road, the shocks though didn't bottom out, like I was kind of worried they might, but they didn't, so my spring went to full up travel, so completely flat, and I still had plenty of shaft left on the shock, so it wasn't gonna bottom out and destroy the shock. Obviously, being 11 inch, it has plenty of down travel. There's bigger things coming which might get me more down travel. That's why I went 11 inch, but you'll have to wait and see for later. Overall, the shocks I'm very happy with. If you're gonna be doing constant bumps, then remote res is just the way to go, I think. And for the price, they're not that expensive. But yeah, not, not that much more expensive and not as expensive as I thought they would be. So I'll give you a look. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you would know that I've under body painted most of this, which is why it looks heaps better than what it did in the video. The shocks are holding up great. A lot of people were asking, am I going to keep these on? Because they tend to keep a lot of dirt and stuff and water in there. But, you know, if I just have to clean them out every now and then, I'd rather do that. Because the shaft is just so close to the tyre, I don't want gravel, you know, rocks throwing up damaging that shaft and it going back and you know destroying the seal because all the rocks and stuff are going to end up at the bottom and there is drain holes in it out so i just you know pour water in there until i see the water come out clear but yeah the under spray underneath makes everything look a lot better didn't really touch on it in the video but obviously i didn't end up mounting them up there just because of how long the hose was it was too much hose right there so being Toyotas and they're super genius engineers they just put holes in the chassis everywhere and some of them are conveniently threaded <laughs> which is super handy other than that um no leaks no issues gone great we got a mazi boy if you enjoyed this what are you doing? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I think hitting the bell turns on notifications. It used to be you just hit subscribe and it was all in one, but now apparently you've got to hit the bell. Alrighty, bye guys.